Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Today we're going to talk about the Linux operating system. So my name is Emilio. I work in the IT industry and I have worked extensively with the Linux operating system and I absolutely love it. So if you're working in a business, if you're working perhaps in an IT um, environment, for example, you, you may be yourself in IT and you want to see, well, look, should Linux be used where I work? In a lot of cases, you may not want to incorporate Linux for your desktop users because that could be a little bit scary for people who've never used it before. But for your server environment, it's actually a, a benefit to install Linux over some of your other ones. Um, Windows has huge licensing costs. Microsoft um, pays, I don't know, extreme amounts for the more installations you have, the more cows you have, you know, in terms of your licensing agreements, while your Linux fleet, CentOS and Ubuntu are generally free. If you do want to get support, you go down the Red Hat route, um, but Red Hat will be, um, you need a bit of support against that. You've got Microsoft and Apple who develop applications and essentially close their systems down. You're only allowed to do things on their systems that they allow you to do, right? So they, it's closed just to uh, essentially to what Apple and what Microsoft allow you to do. There is uh, not a open source community around the Apple and the Microsoft's um, operating systems. The Linux operating system is open source, which means that people can go in, they can go and develop, they can actually develop code for the operating system itself. They can provide improvements, suggestions, and future additions of the Linux operating systems can be improved with new functionality because of this open source community that surrounds the Linux operating systems. Once you understand the command line and you know all the different commands through that Linux platform, being able to navigate and being able to actually execute things and do things is a lot quicker. The other great benefit is that it uses less computer resources generally, having a command line as opposed to having the graphical user interface. So previously you had all of your virtual machines. You know, I want to build a new database server. I want to build a new web server. I want to build a new file server. And they're all going to be Windows operating systems, Windows server operating systems. Now you have the flexibility, or how you have for a little while, is to run Linux in the back end. Linux is going to be cheaper when it comes to your licensing, substantially. Going down a Linux fleet, if you go in CentOS and Ubuntu, it's free. You can download it, you can use it, you can fully use it and utilize all of these amazing features. Like you can build a fully fledged uh, LAMP server, which is essentially a server that has Apache and PHP and all these other things to run a web server, completely free. As opposed to you having to buy Microsoft Windows Server and then configure you know, IIS or whatever you want to do to actually configure that on that end. It's going to be completely free and it's generally going to run quicker and requires less resources to run on it than a Windows operating system would. So Linux is definitely a better way to go. Now, a lot of bigger end companies would say, well, look, I need some sort of support. You know, what if, what if I have a problem with this Linux server? I need somebody to be able to call and help me out. This is why a lot of people would then decide to go down the Red Hat, the RHEL, the Red Hat Enterprise License Editions, um, which are essentially a, a funkier version of your other versions, for example, a CentOS, where you now pay a, a license fee, which is still cheaper than your Windows fee, but you now you've got access to a full community and a full support portal for logging um, support calls, etc., with uh, Red Hat directly. So the other thing about Red Hat in an enterprise world is Red Hat comes in a desktop and a server editions for most operating system uh, distributions. So you can get CentOS desktop and CentOS server. So if you do choose to use um, you know, Linux on your desktop computers in, a, in an environment, in, in a work environment, you can use the desktop version. If you're building up um, servers, virtual machines, you can install your um, your, your server editions, your CentOS server, your Red Hat server, your Ubuntu server, which are server applications, server operating systems that come with a lot more features and expandability um, around the server space. 
So the one thing you've really got to consider is the amount of resources that will be required for a Linux fleet is going to be a lot less than a Windows fleet. So if you are in, perhaps you're in a position where you, you have to make decisions around um, costings of your hardware and software and licensing and those sort of things, generally you'll find that going down the Linux fleet is going to be cheaper. It's going to require less resources. Um, because it requires, um, you know, if it's command line, it requires less resources on those CPUs as opposed to your graphical user interfaces in a Windows environment. But the flip side, of course, is that you will need to have a Linux person or somebody that's employed that understands the Linux operating system. Now, the other great thing about Linux is you generally will not have to do as much day-to-day -day maintenance on a Linux server as you would a Windows or a Mac. Um, Windows and Mac will generally release updates pretty regularly. They'll require reboots, they'll require const you know, constantly installing patches, all that sort of stuff. A Linux environment, because it is command line based, um, requires a lot of the time less updates. There are updates that get released, security updates that do get released for the Linux environments, but they're generally less frequent than your Windows, substantially less frequent than your Windows. In a lot of instances, you may not require a reboot, so which means you won't require a downtime for a Linux server. Again, I'm not saying this happens every time, but it's generally going to be less. So in terms of outages to your core applications, it will be minimized if you do have um, Linux environments. But keeping in mind that you will have to have some sort of Linux resource to be able to maintain and manage your environment properly. So that is my summary of the Linux operating systems. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel Digital by Computing just on the button there for more videos.